Hello, welcome along to Birmingham. It is a big day, isn't it, tomorrow? And also we have a magnificent night of boxing on show at the Resorts World Arena tomorrow night. Matt Macklin, Andy Clark and Johnny Nelson. It is a plethora of guests alongside me today. Uh, it is a brilliant night of action tomorrow night, headlined by Joshua Boatsy back in the ring after a year out. He takes on Pavel Stepin and as you can see there, the Lonsdale belt will be up for grabs for the very first time in women's boxing as Lauren Price battles it out with Kirsty Babington. It is going to be a cracking night. How much are you looking forward to it, Andy? Yeah, really looking forward to it because you, you look at the cards and if you're brutally honest about it, the fighters on the left-hand side, they're the favourites. And if they perform in the way that we know that they can or that we hope that they can, they should win. But if they don't, then they'll be in trouble. Uh, and that's really what this card is about because Stepien is a good fighter yep. and you look at his demeanour this week he means business he's here to win he's in shape Kirsty Bavington same thing I was talking to Jordan Grant up against Ben Whittaker he knows what a big opportunity this is McCauley McGowan's been all business all week uh, and it's he the same with yesterday at the press conference yeah, wasn't Sean he? McCoon sort... Casey Benjamin yep. everybody below that too it's, it's massive opportunities here for, for, for everybody involved and a chance for Joshua Boatsy to, to remind us all what he can do because we haven't seen him for a year, have we, in the ring. Throughout his career, when, when we announced him, when he kept turn pro, there was a lot of fanfare, wasn't there? A lot of hype surrounding Joshua Boatsy. But to say he's been inactive, it's a bit of an understatement, isn't it? Do, do you think that will affect things? How, how will that sort of play out tomorrow night? I mean, uh, there could definitely be a little bit of rust there, but um, I think he'll be very eager to... Uh, Impress. Yeah. I think I think that he's got to guard against not trying too hard and trying to force things. You know, trying to make a statement. I think just go in there, establish the jab, and just let everything flow. Don't force it. You know, he's a great fighter. He's a brilliant fighter. Someone who I believe and always did believe will become a world champion. I think he's, you know, the business. He's just got to get moving. And it's frustrating when you're inactive. It's frustrating when you've had injuries. You want everyone talking yeah. about you. You feel like you're the forgotten man which he has become a little bit. But, you know, hopefully Saturday night is the start of, you know, the next phase of his career. Yeah, Johnny, talking about the frustration, we've got Dan Aziz with us tomorrow night. He's he's watched, hasn't he, the likes of Dan Aziz, who he knows very, very well, known him for years, but many rounds with him. He's watched the likes of Dan be active and sort of come through. Can you, can you relate to that sort of frustration? Uh, totally. I think there'd be professional jealousy, no matter what, no matter how friendly they are. Uh, I think there's an excuse if the performance isn't on par Saturday night because of that inactivity. I, I think there'll be more frustration than anything else. Uh, on a professional basis, this man has now taken his career into his own hands. So he, he looks at your Danazis, and as far as he's concerned, he said it yesterday, I'm the best in Britain. You know, that we're, we're all here. I'm the best here. So therefore, you, I'm the guy you need to be talking about. I'm the, I should be the, the head honcho. So, so Saturday night is a chance for him to re-establish himself uh, and and to, to, to remind everybody who he is and he needs to create consistency for people to believe who he is. And he, Stepian, he's, he's highly ranked, isn't he? What kind of problems or any problems can you see him giving Joshua Boatsy tomorrow evening? I, I like him. When you watch him, he does everything pretty well. You know, he's got good feet. He takes his feet with him everywhere he goes, which might sound like a bit of a strange thing yeah. to say, but he doesn't overbalance when he throws. He, he knows what he's doing. He throws good, solid combinations. He looks to kind of work in a tight circle around you. He's happy to give you the centre of the ring, but he's never too far away from you. So he will be ambitious. Decent upper body movement. Solid hand position when it comes to protecting himself. So he does everything really pretty well. I wouldn't be surprised if it's similar in a way to the fight we saw him have against Marco Cialic, if you remember that one, where Cialic gave it a real good crack. Yeah. And it was a tough fight for the first half. And then Buatzi got on top of him. And I wouldn't be disappointed either if that's what we see because people do want to see Josh make a bit of a statement and, and kind of you know you look at those London boys him and Yard uh, and Dan Aziz uh, and Craig Richards you know Dan's kind of got a lot of publicity recently done really well Anthony's had a couple of world title fights did well against Baturbiev and, and Josh like Johnny says has been in the background just kind of waiting for his chance so he'll want to impress want to impress um, because of the sort of inactivity of the year out how much pressure is on his shoulders to impress that he needs to deliver that statement do you think he does Matt? Yeah I do he, uh, but, but it's important that he doesn't try and he's got to get that out of his head a little bit and just focus on. Because you can try too hard. Oh, absolutely! You? If you start, if you tighten up and you start trying to force things, everything goes 
you know, pear shaped. So he's got to relax. He's got to be totally focused and switched on, but relaxed at the same time. Um, you know, the, the fight Andy mentioned there, challenge. That, that that was a tough fight for Josh. He had to come through adversity in that fight. He got caught. His eye. Um, you know, I was impressed with him that night because he showed me he's got that bit inside him that he can dig down deep if he has to. And you know, maybe he'll have to do that on Saturday night. But I think as long as he, um, as long as he's the Josh that we know then I think he comes through it. I know we can actually talk about the, 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 the perfections or, or imperfections inside the ring, but now in this position now, he needs to also build his brand outside the ring. Yesterday's press conference was more or less Ben Whitaker. Uh, and so, if, but if, is that not just Josh, Joshua Bwatsi? Because yeah. we talked about this, didn't we, yesterday. Can he, can he be like Ben? You know what? Does he, he need to be like this Ben? Is, he's going to have to learn. He's going to have to learn to, to let people... That Dan Aziz, they're talking about him. Dan Aziz is a bit of a character about him. There's something about him. Joshua is polite. He's respectful. He just wants to fight. And I totally get that, to be to be authentic in, in, our, in our sport. But now it's business. And the business is he needs us to be talking about him after a press conference. He needs us to be talking about him when he's not even fighting. Because you're talking to about a, we were talking about a guy, Ben Whitaker, that's not even at that level. So if Josh Bawatsi had Ben Whitaker's personality or, or mouth or attention, this guy would be probably 10, 20 steps ahead of where he is now. So, so we, we understand how good he is inside the ring. Now he needs to work on his, his, his personality outside the ring. Personality outside the ring. Do, do you agree, Matt? Do, do you think we need to see more from Joshua outside the ring? Do we need to see more of his personality? I mean, ideally, but, uh, but, uh, but I don't think he should be inauthentic. And he's not really his personality. He's not an outgoing extrovert, is he? He's got me shy about coming forward. Yeah, yeah. So it's that yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, exactly. So, look, I, I, think, I, think, I think Josh's profile and... and, and um, Reputation is going to grow by being active, by fighting. He's very much a man that just wants to do the talking yeah. in the yeah, ring, yeah. isn't he? I don't think he seems to be that fussed about anything outside of the ring. He's kind of that that switch gets flicked, doesn't it, on fight night? When that happens, we don't really know, and I don't think he even really knows. But that's who Josh is, isn't it? He's the nicest man outside of the ring, but an absolute demon inside. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. But 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 Johnny's right. He does need to. He does need to maybe have people's names in his mouth a little bit more. And there are dance partners out there. Callum Smith's got a fight against Artur Baturbiev, so those three belts are taken care of. Bivol but he, will have he his... said he's quite fancy the winner of that one. Well, of course he does, but in the meantime, he's going to have to fight. And, you know, I mentioned Dan Aziz. Obviously, he's with the same approach. Dan will fight anyone. Anthony Yard, you know, they know each other, these boys, and they're not. They're, they're all happy to get it on. You know, there are dance partners out there, so let's dance. They've got to start dancing. Ward, because if Andre they don't, Ward. then, you know, what are we here for? Andre Ward is your prime example. An unbelievable fighter, outstanding fighter. But he probably could have been more of a household name totally. if he just added that little bit of something extra to his personality outside of it. Another example, Joe Calzaghe. Right, Joe Calzaghe, when, when Naz was coming through and banging everyone out, and Naz was Naz, and Joe was trying to think, well, that works, that's the way to sell yourself. And he was going, I'm the best, man. And it just didn't work because yeah. it wasn't Joe. You've got to be authentic. You know, Rick everyone's got their way of being marketed and he's, I suppose that's Boxer's job because they're the promoters they've just got to think how do we market Joshua Boatze and really it's to make the big fights because he's good enough to fight anyone it, make the fights isn't that going to be the interesting thing then post fight tomorrow to see what Josh should he come through it see what he does tomorrow night whether we are going to see that from Joshua Boatze which he haven't really particularly seen before yeah I, I think we I don't think he's really... It doesn't lack confidence, Josh. He's not a shy, retiring he's guy. He's a quietly confident person. It, he's, he's quiet because he's got so much confidence. Yeah. You know, he's one of them. He completely believes in himself. And that's why he doesn't feel the need to really say anything. Um, and I think people maybe don't understand that about him sometimes. But but I agree with everything that's been said here. He needs to be authentic. But there are fights out there for him. Let's have that fight with Dan Aziz. Let's call out we, Anthony we Yard. By, by, by the way, I don't think calling someone out is inauthentic. I'm just saying he doesn't have to be. He's never going to be a Nassim no, Hamid. No, no, we did see glimpses yesterday when I asked him about where he ranks himself in the UK. He was straight in there number saying one. number one. I asked him who he thought number two was and he just said, I don't really care. You know, we, you are seeing glimpses come through. Perhaps we might need to see it a bit more. Uh, let's just talk a, on a, a quick word on uh, Ben Whitaker because... They are polar opposites, aren't they? We very much saw that yesterday. I mean, Ben, at his first press conference, when we announced he was turning pro, he was calling out the media, wasn't he? Telling them to be quiet. He's not back with well, coming He's forward. a promoter's dream because yeah. you don't even have to promote him. He promotes himself. <laughs> you know, Joshua Boxer are going to have to work hard with Joshua Watsi. They're not going to have to work hard with Ben. He's going to sell himself. 
that's a good thing, I guess, is that? Yeah, I mean, I mean he, he's a bit. He's going to be marmite, isn't he? I'm, I'm sure there'll be people out there that but maybe. They, but they'll all be talking about him. Exactly, and I guess that that's exactly what you need to do, and that's kind of what you're saying, I guess, Johnny, a little bit. Yeah, I know he's he's good at it as well because sometimes people do that and they don't really pull it off. I suspect away from the cameras, he's probably not really like that. But when the cameras are on, he totally commits to it and you have to because there are no half measures if you walk that road you know you can't walk down the middle of the street you've got to absolutely do oh, really? it or not do it yeah definitely I, I enjoy him um, right it is all about the way in today so let's get proceedings underway and hand you over to Big Mo for the introductions He comes to us from Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico. Introducing Cristian Lopez Flores. <laughs> Official weight, nine stone, eight pounds, five ounces for Cristian Flores. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, he comes to us with an undefeated record of eight victories versus no defeats. Fighting out of Leamington Spa, England, here is Danny Quartermain. Ready or not, here I go, you can't hide, gonna find you and take it slowly. Ready Official weight, nine stone, five pounds for Danny Quartermain. Four rounds then a lightweight between Danny Quartermain and Christian Lopez Flores. Quartermain, he's a popular fighter this one, Johnny. 8-0, undefeated from Leamington Spa. What are you looking forward to in, in this fight? You know, I, I love seeing fights at this stage of career. The development, the early stages, the baby stages. and The hungry. The hungry stages. And uh, uh, it's a pity you can't kind of fast forward and see what their appetite and their, their, their speed, their talk is like when it comes to... to five or six fights down the line but as long as he stays young, hungry um, doesn't let the attention the popularity get to his head stays on the right track then only time will tell his story Danny Quartermain he will be looking to grab the limelight tomorrow night surely Matt sorry say it again huh? I knew you were going to say that we're back to this aren't we I said for Quartermain he'll be looking to grab the limelight I'm sure tomorrow night oh yeah of course every, every undercard fighter wants to steal the show if they can There down there. He's from a strong gym, Danny Quartermain. He's got Edwin Cleary in his corner up in Leamington. He's got Matty Harris, um, who's doing well at heavyweight. Lewis Williams, who got a Commonwealth gold medal uh, up on the GB setup. So you know that gym's really, it's really looking good. Bill, for you, a big platform, just how excited are you and, and what sort of performance do you want to produce tomorrow? No, it's um, the biggest part of my career so far, um, really excited, really excited about tomorrow and obviously being a massive crowd with me from Leamington Spa, um, just here to put Leamington back on the boxing mat really. So, yeah. He's a tough man, uh, he has been stopped only four times, never by a Brit, how desperate would you be to be the first man to do that? No, it'd be, uh, it'd be a privilege to do so, um, we'll just go out there and stick to the game plan box as well as we can and uh, we'll see what the outcome is tomorrow but it would definitely be a win. Good luck, thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much. Our next contest, ladies and gentlemen, is a rematch. Scheduled for eight three-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing first to the scales, he'll be fighting out of the blue corner tomorrow night. 
from Brighouse, England, with a professional record of 14 victories versus just one loss. Here is Jimmy the Fist first. Well, Andy, this was a fun fight, wasn't it, in Bournemouth? It became, this is basically the rematch of that, it became all about the saga of a gum shield, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I've never really seen anything quite like it. Because it was so strange. It was really, really odd. As, as Matt was saying on commentary, Jimmy First looks in great shape. He, he's an extraordinary character, Jimmy First. Johnny bumped into him in Cuba on his holidays. He was out there sparring over Christmas. But it did become all about the gum shield. And Matt was saying during the fight, he wasn't spitting it out. I was saying, Matt, during, during the original encounter right between these two you were saying he wasn't spitting it out Corey Gibb so you can Gibbs. see why the referee was as patient as he was but he just couldn't keep it in his mouth and that did become the story of the fight we felt like Corey Gibbs had probably just about done enough despite the three penalty points but you could see that they were losing patience yeah definitely 11 pounds for Corey Gibbs yeah, just to echo what Andy said, it was really, it was a really weird fight to commentate on because it was like, Corey, for me, he was winning the rounds, yeah, he was getting these points taken up and it was just a frustrating situation. Clearly wasn't but, but spinning also, it out. also so distracting for fighters. Yeah, let, let, let's be honest, Cor Corey would have got the, the shout if he didn't get the points taken off him. So now he wants to ride that wrong. He feels embarrassed uh, that that has happened. But Jimmy first, Jimmy first has put the, he's one of those guys where once you've seen him once, you actually know what to expect. Well, he's, he's so, 42 years old 42? and he describes himself as the oldest prospect in boxing. But as Andy Clark just said there, he looks in good shape. He, he? Listen, I, I, I saw him, I was on holiday. I saw this guy walking through queue. I'm thinking, that looks like Jimmy first. <laughs> And I, I said, Jimmy Fist. He yeah. turned to you and went, that looks like Johnny Nelson. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but he was out there sparring. Well, you wouldn't believe it. 42 years old, he's taking himself all the way out of Cuba, all the way around the world to spar with the best. So, to, trust me, he's not just here to make a bit of coin. He loves the sport to the point where he's showing commitment to do things like that. I was so surprised. Tried to have a little laugh as well yesterday uh, as Jimmy first bought some super glue, didn't he, to the press conference and, and tried to give that to Corey, but Corey wasn't having any of it, was he, really, yesterday? No, I don't think he, I don't think he seen the funny side, did he? No, no, no. You know, he, he, got his, he got the loss of his career, didn't he? And, you know, he, he, it's not a laughing matter for him and he wants to avenge that. What kind of fight do you think it'll turn into tomorrow night in this one? I expect Corey to, to box well tomorrow. You know, he said that he couldn't get any rhythm or flow in his work because it kept, you know, the gum shield kept coming out and there was no. But I so, guess once you've made that mistake, that is not going to happen again in your boxing well, career. Well, I'd be it? absolutely flabbergasted if it did. <laughs> I mean, you, you really would hope not, wouldn't you? It, it was strange to watch at the time, though. Why, why couldn't he just clamp his mouth shut and keep the, keep the mouthpiece in? It was, it was so odd. All right, well, let's hear from Jimmy first. First, he's with Andy Scott. Jimmy, you've got bragging rights in this one. Uh, big question, is it repeat or revenge? I'm sure you're thinking it's going to be repeat. Why? Only repeat. Um, I'm here to do the double and in uh, emphatic fashion. And Because uh, this time I've had a full four-week camp. <laughs> um, joking aside, you know, I'm always ready. And, uh, you know, you saw what I could do on 10 days' notice. This time, uh, four weeks. I fought eight weeks ago as well. I'm fresh and I'm ready. In the nicest possible way, you're doing it for all the veterans out there. Uh, you worked hard to get on this platform. I know you've already said to Ben Shalom, I want to stay. Absolutely, I'm here to stay. Um, I've done my apprenticeship on the uh, small all shows. And, um, you know, you'll see Saturday night why I'm meant to be here. Jimmy, good luck. Thank Corey you. Gibbs is with us. Corey, you come in. I mean, all the talk, you know, you can't get away from it. It's about the gum shield. That aside, do you believe that you can revenge this? Yeah, yeah, no interruptions this time. Uh, everything's done done properly. I've been professional this time. So, yeah, I'm going to definitely get the win and do it in style. Just a chance to put that behind you? Yeah, of course. That, like, that's in the past now. It's done. So, obviously, all the training's been done. Weight's been made. All that's left to do now is get the win on Saturday night, and I will do that. Good luck. Thank you. Moving along, ladies and gentlemen, to the light heavyweight division. Eight three-minute rounds tomorrow night here in Birmingham at the Resorts World Arena. Introducing first to the scales. He comes to us with a professional record of 20 victories versus six defeats, with five of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Portsmouth, England, here is Joel El Toro McIntyre. Yeah, he'll be absolutely awkward, because now this guy's had, had time to prepare to get him with him. 
Official weight, 12 stone, 10 pounds, 5 ounces for El Toro. Eight rounds, the light heavyweight between Shaq and Peters and Joel McIntyre. Shaq and Peters, of course, is back in action after losing his British title his to Dan opponent. Aziz. That was last year, Matt. But what are you looking to see from Shaq and Peters tomorrow night? Yeah, just a, a solid uh, performance and a good win. He needs to... Uh, just to prove to us that that loss, you know, he hasn't he let it affect right his confidence and self-belief. Okay, he, he came up short against Dan Aziz, but I think what Dan Aziz has gone on to achieve since then, become European champion. That should give Shakan confidence. Is there? I'm, I'm, always, I'm always baffled when I see him thinking, he's bigger than most heavyweights. How is he? 12 and a half, 12, 7. Just How is that say the same thing. Shakan Pitters. It is pretty remarkable how he packs it into that frame, but I really like this fight because this is a really good example of what we were talking about at the top, whereby Shakan Pitters is the home guy. He's expected to win this fight, but if he's not quite on it, Joel McIntyre will give it to him. And capitalise on it Because he's, well. he's been English champion a couple of times. People look at his record. He got stopped early by Lyndon Arthur a couple of fights ago, and at that point I kind of wondered maybe he's on the fade a bit, but then he did 10 tough rounds with Ricky Summers, and we know Ricky, he's a good solid fighter. Um, lost his English title but I think he's got plenty left McIntyre and like I say if Pitters in any way feels like this is going to be an easier night and he manages to get inside that jab then McIntyre could cause him big problems I think it's a well matched fight two former English champions these guys have still got ambitions appetite to do something uh, in our game so one will be left behind one will, will head up uh, and, you know carry on tracing his gym. and perhaps a fight that someone like Ben Whitaker might have his eye on as well he's got to Ben Whitaker's got to think about all these kind of guys in and not dismiss them we just take a moment though to uh, to acknowledge how exciting domestically as well the light heavyweight division is it's driving isn't it yeah brilliant division um Probably the strongest yeah, in the UK, yeah. I'd say, strength in depth. Because, um, like, you know, these, these, these are not quite that top tier domestically. They've been beating at, you know, Dan Aziz, beat Shakan. But, you know, he has been British champion. I'm sure he'd love to be British champion again. Uh, obviously, the, the belt are tied up at the minute, but they got fragmented and came loose. You know, he'd love to get another crack at it, I would guess. And some exciting fights at this level out there as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Shakan wants to get back into that that kind of British title level as quick as he can. I remember, you know, he won the title. They gave him the big build up on Channel Five. He then took on Craig Richards, and it it, it didn't go well for him that night. But he's, you know, he's looking to try and get back up there. Okay, let's hear from Joel and Shakan now with Andy Scott. Joel first. Joel, first things first. A lot of people, style wise, picking this to be one of the fights of the night. Do you agree with that? I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm always ready to fight. It's not a secret. I'm not exactly a slick boxer. I come forward and I want to fight and I look for the knockout. He had his trainers on there. That was obvious to see. But he, yeah, but he is a, that's not, can't get away from the fact that he is a tall man, the height and reach. Um, how do you deal with that? Yeah, it's just the same as any, anyone, man. There's, there's ways, you know, we've got to react to different things and just deal with it on the night. It is what it is. Good luck. Let's bring Shaq Ampitters in as well with the trainers on Shaq. Without Still with the trainers. trainers. Still without trainers I'm good, exactly. He, those of you who didn't hear that, even with the trainers, he's a tall man. I mean, the first question is, everybody always raises an eyebrow. Just shows your hard work and dedication to squeeze everything in that frame. Yeah, 100%. I train hard for every opponent, so on the night it's a lot easier job for me. You know, Joe's a decent opponent, and I know what i got to do to just get the win and do what i got to do. He was very honest there. He said, I'm not the slickest of boxers, but you know what I'm coming to do. So how do you counteract to that? Just be on my game and be at the best of me. Um, I know I'm a slick boxer, I'm a good boxer, I can fight, I could do it all. So I, I believe, you know, the best of me on the night is going to beat the best of him. But all credit to Joel, you know, for taking a fight and being here. Good luck to both of you. Thanks for joining us. As you said, Johnny, Shaq and Peters, it is tall, he's big for a light heavy, six foot in those and trainers. Six foot one. Six foot one, really? He's six, he's six, right six foot, but in those trainers. I tell everybody I'm six foot four. You get older with it, you shrink it. Oh, I'm on six foot. Okay, six two and a half. Versus two defeats with six of those wins coming by way of knockout. From right here in Birmingham, England, here is Casey 
Benjamin. Now this is going to be a good fight. This, this, if, if anything's going to steal fight tonight, I think this one has got it written all over. It's one of those that really could catch fire, isn't it? Man? I, I was talking to Pete Taylor and Sean McCone before, and uh, they're bang up for Yeah, well, you can see that, free. can't you? Yeah, he's a good boxer, Sean McCone. He was a really good amateur. Um, started brilliantly as a professional. I think the ball last in his career tailored up a little bit, but uh, he knows that a big win here can sort of reignite his career. versus just one loss with five of those wins coming by way of knockout fighting out of Belfast Northern Ireland introducing the reigning defending WBO European super lightweight champion the public nuisance Sean McCone you got a feeling Andy this one's going to catch fire and as Johnny said as Matt said could potentially steal the show yeah, it, it's a really interesting fight, this. And there's a lot on the line here for Sean McCone because he was at lightweight. Then he had a fight with Gavin Gwynn, who's now British champion, has been for a while. And he got stopped in the seventh round. And he quit. There's just no other way to say it. It's not a word I like to use, but he did. And since then, he's moved up to super lightweight. And that will follow him around, won't it? And the next time he's in a really hard fight people will ask that question of him his opponents more like it won't they they'll feel like if they could take him there then they can make him do that again and he's got to prove to us the next time we see him in one that that's not going to happen although i'm not sure casey benjamin's necessarily got the style to do that he's, he's more of a stand back boxer puncher um and if this is a boxing match you know mccomb might be a little bit too slick for him. I don't know. It's an interesting fight. What was your assessment of Benjamin's performance against Alton Smith? Because we, we we saw some flashes there. Didn't I thought we? he did really well. I thought he was he showed he can compete at that level. But I was disappointed that he didn't push harder to try and win at that level. I, I, and I get that, but I think that was a below par Dalton Smith. Uh, I agree uh, with Dalton, that as well. Dalton Smith says that himself. So I don't. I think that was a, a false representation of Benjamin and and Dalton Smith. So now we'll probably see how good he really is. I think that might have been his level. If he was having a chance to beat Don Smith, it was then. Has he got much better than it, uh, in him than that fight? You don't know. This fight could tell us that. Because when you know a fight has got quit in him, if you're, a fight, if you're an opponent of a fight that's got quit in him, no matter what, you, you're always going to think, I ain't got quit in me. I've, I, I've got the beat in you. Which why, so, my so before you get in the ring, you, you know you've got the sort of mental advantage. That's right. So that's why that might fire him up even more. Because because it's just an unwritten rule uh, in, with most fighters. What's it going to come down to, Andy? Ne neither of them are giving in this one. No, I think, you know, McCone was a good amateur. He's a southpaw. He's a good mover. He's got good technical skills. Casey Benjamin's got that kind of, kind of stuttery style almost where he can launch himself from the outside. And I think it might take a little bit of time to really catch fire this fight because there's a lot on line here for both of them I feel like particularly you think it could McCone, be a bit of a cagey start yeah I think it could be yeah I think it could be and yeah I agree with that and with with Casey he talked about that fight against Dalton Smith Dal Dalton's not going to hang on to that belt for much longer he's got another fight scheduled he wants to win it outright I think and then he's going to move on and and so that could become I agree you know, with Johnny too I, th I think Dalton Smith was below par that night too as good as Casey Benjamin bucks I thought Dalton Smith wasn't quite at the races as any normally would be. Yeah, I mean, if that bell does become vacant, he'll definitely feel like he's good enough to, to win it. McCown's got that Europe, that WBO European title belt. And look, let's well. not, there's no mistake, this is not the European title belt that, 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 that most of us are familiar with. It's a, a chance to get him in the mix and get his name mentioned to get himself up the, the European rankings. Uh, but on a European level, the European title, the EU title, that's the one that gets the world on it. And a chance to do it on this platform as well, in front of the TV cameras, which is what every fighter wants to do. All right, let's hear from both fighters there with Andy Scott. Sean, final thoughts ahead of this one. Set it up for us. We're all looking forward to this one. Yeah, it's, uh, as I said before, it's got the, the makings of a great fight. Two good records, 50-50 fit, all for an nice shiny belt, so I'm excited.
Yeah, you worked hard to win the belt. I'm sure you're going to be desperate to keep it. Yeah, exactly. And that will show my performance. Got a message for everyone watching back home? Bang, bang, gravy, chip. <laughs> Good luck to you. Let's bring up Casey Benjamin. Casey, well done. Inside the limit. Uh, you look delighted. I know you are. Um, just set it up for us ahead of tomorrow night. Uh, you know, um, I'm looking to put on a good performance in front, of, in front of all my fans in my hometown. And yeah, hopefully he comes to fight and we'll obviously make a exciting fight for the fans. Just finally, we know you're a blue. We know most of your football uh, supporters are also blue as well. Um, just a message to everybody. Keep right on. Come on, you Zulus. Good luck. And now, the light heavyweight division once again. Six three-minute rounds. Live here in Birmingham tomorrow night. Presented by Boxer on Sky Sports. Introducing first to the scales. He comes to us with a professional record of six victories versus three defeats. Fighting out of Hamilton, Scotland. Introducing the game, Jordan Griff. Looking forward to this one, Johnny. Jordan Grant takes on Ben Whitaker, of course. Ben Whitaker turned pro again to quite a fanfare, a lot of excitement around him. But he's had a frustrating start, to say the least, isn't he? Two bites and then a nine month layoff due to injury. Luckily, no surgery, but surely he'll be raring to go and get back in the mix tomorrow night. And even though he was respectful yesterday at the press conference, he, he said, I'm going to give, it, give myself an honest. Um, an honest approach, an honest, uh, be very honest and authentic about how I'm going to fight. Is he going to give it all? He knows he's in, in there up against it. So as far as he's concerned, I get excited with this, this calling. Uh, as far as he's concerned, it's a hard fight, but a beatable fight. He's got to G himself up, give himself an excuse to fight big deeper than he ever has because he knows this is a very hard fight for him. We spoke about it at the top, Andy, about when you have a layoff, and like I said, a frustrating start that Ben's had to his professional career. There could be a danger of trying that little bit too hard. In his pro debut, we saw the skills, didn't we? We saw the flair, showboating. His second professional fight, he, he wasn't happy at all with his performance. We asked him yesterday, what are we going to see? He said, whatever Ben wakes up in the morning, what do you think we're going to see from Ben tomorrow evening? He looks fantastic. Doesn't he? On yeah. the scales. And this is a strict 12 and a half stone, so he's inside the light heavyweight limit. So it's really good to get into that habit early yeah. on, just making your actual weight. I'm just really curious to see what differences we see between him now and we saw last August. He's been with Sugar Hill for a good while. And he says he's Sugar used the up to his advantage in terms of working on things. Sugar Hill is all about that Kronk style. Set your feet, slow things down, punch hard. And that is really what I want to see from him. Just some evidence of that. We know he's got the reflexes. We know he's got the movement. He's got to make sure he maintains all of that. But just a bit more of an adaption to a pro style. Because this is kind of like a second debut for him in a way isn't it with the amount of time that he's been out but physically I think he looks a bit different there I don't know what what you guys think what do you think Matt how do you think Ben looks I think he looks good uh, he looks in great shape good to see him coming in on the limit or just under it uh, that'll you know fare well to me as he progresses through his career you know blowing up and in a way ain't a good thing um He's slick, isn't he? He's a slick fighter. He's got great, elusive upper body movement, good feet as well. He can switch. He, he, do, do you see Jordan Grant though causing many problems tomorrow? No, I think I think he'll be willing and I think he'll try his best. He'll be aggressive, but I think he's just going to play into Ben Whitaker's hands even more so. Do you like what Ben Whitaker does in terms of, you know, the, put into context, this is just his third professional fight, but yet he is calling people out straight away. Like I said at the top, is he, is, is he a polar opposite, isn't he, to Joshua Bawatsi? Are, are you a fan of that? And I like everything about him. I like the fact that you're, you're, we're talking about him in the same breath as Joshua Bawatsi, uh, even though it's nowhere near that yet in regards to professional experience. Uh, he understands the outside game, the outside of the boxing game, to, to self-promote, to get yourself into one way, in, into people's brains one way or another. Everything this young man is doing is right. What the only problem is, is getting that, it's injury, it's got to be injury free. And as long as he keeps fighting, keeps being the fighter he is, he yeah. will be a potential superstar. Important to keep active, and we always talk about momentum, but how hard do you think it is going to be matching someone like Ben Whitaker? 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's going to be difficult. I mentioned Ricky Summers earlier on, English champion, West Midlands fighter. I'm sure he would fancy it because the money for fighting Ben is, is there, isn't it, if you're someone like him? Right, Jordan Grant is ready and waiting with Andy Scott. Let's hear from him. Jordan, fair to say you're here to win. You're here to change your life and your family's life. Just how confident are you now you've looked into his eyes? Listen, the hard work's been done. Uh, it's just time to go now. we will go and refuel. And, like, I've no much to say. I just want to get in there and fight now. Fair to say you're two very different characters? Ah, very different, very different. You got a final message? No, just enjoy it. It's going to be a good one. Thanks for joining us. Good luck Thank to you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Zoe is back. Let's join him uh, up on stage. I mean, I'm sure nine months you've been counting down every single day to uh, tomorrow night, one step closer. Uh, how did you feel making the weight again? Hey, man, the work's done. The talking's done. It's worked hard tomorrow. Can you let us in a little bit? What are the emotions at the moment? And when will that sort of uh, switch flick into fight mode or, or are we there now? Switched already, man. You can see it in my eyes. There's no games, man. There's no games. So tomorrow, you see why I'm different. Big platform needs a big star. Tell us why that's you. Hey, man, you've seen the body up there. I'm different to these type of guys, man, so you'll see why. You can tease it a little bit. I think we've got some special shorts and a special ring walk to match. Is that fair to say? Hey, man, listen, I don't want to give away all the gems, but tune in tomorrow. Make sure you got your tickets, if not, watch it on Sky Sports, and you'll be impressed. Thanks for the plug. Go well. It feels like when you got on Benway to go up there, you, you kind of don't need us. He sort of just sells himself. He's a peon's beam, yeah, isn't, isn't he? he? Straight, Straight down the, the barrel of the camera. Just roll the camera. Exactly. <laughs> Fighting out of Withenshaw, England, here is Macaulay McGowan. Say it again, Johnny, but another good fight, this one. Another good fight. I felt so sorry for him uh, over in France where they robbed him, really. I think he, he walked away with the draw, but he, they robbed him. Oh, and, Saeed and, in Paris. Yeah, yeah. and he actually, he actually showed a good account of himself. And I actually think in the fight itself, he actually didn't realise the good work he was doing and let him off the hook a few times. Good fighter. Um, but how much, do, how much do you learn as a fighter going to Paris and, and being involved in those sort of situations? I know it's just wrong to say, but as a fighter, when you go to France, Italy, place like that, you say you've got to knock a match to get a draw. So you know you won, it's just not official. But you make sure it never happens again, and you're going to give it all. So that's why you can't afford to lose this against Thailand, uh, because, because it kind of cements what happened in France to say well this is your level this is where you are Matt a fight a fight that you like as well oh definitely uh, you know Macaulay McGowan he's uh, he's here to win he, he, they you don't saw know that how yesterday to... the presser didn't you I mean Savage Dad asked him a couple of questions about his fight with Sergio Martinez and he just didn't want to talk about it did he, he was like nah done talking on to the move next on one. Yeah. on to the next one and look, Tyler Denny's really impressed us recently yeah. on Sky Sports where he's had that run where he's just taking everyone's O he's, he's the O O stealer isn't he of these undefeated fighters so I mean that, that is a 50-50 fight uh, could go either way who, who are you fancying this one I shouldn't really ask you that question should I Andy because you've got to commentate on it I, I like it as a fight. I, I'm I really taking that do. hat off just for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Macaulay McGowan showed us, he's shown us plenty since he's come back into boxing. And the draw in Paris was, it was unfortunate. But if you're going to get robbed, get robbed on TV. Everybody knows what happened. It didn't really do him too much harm. And he's got another opportunity here. And against Denny, Tyler was put into a British title final eliminator against Kieran Conway, which he didn't fancy. And I can understand why he didn't. But for McGowan, if you can beat Tyler Denny, that's where he is. That will then put you into the, the picture at British title level, which is ultimately his ambition. For Tyler, I know that they were chasing Matteo Signani around, I'm pretty sure, the European champion. Denzel Bentley's chasing him, Felix Cash. Everybody's, everybody's running around after the 42-year-old Italian. They all fancy him uh, for the European title. So this maybe wasn't the fight that he was hoping for, but he's just got to make sure that there's a lot of the line for both fighters. He cannot take his eye off the ball here or it undoes all the good work he's done over the last couple of years. Which could add that extra bit of spice, Johnny. McGowan's the kind of fighter that looks like he's constantly got a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. How he talks, how he stands, how he how he how he uh, 
how he presents himself, and that's probably what you need to, to in, the, in, in this fight game. Seems, Palace, seems to be working well with Joe Gallagher. Uh, yeah, well, well, talking that, about chips on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> now, but, but, now, but, 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 but there's power in that. You know, that was against the world mentality, siege mentality, and especially now he's back in champs camp in my side as well. It's it's that team camaraderie. You know, that's everyone's what, against us mentality, and there's power in that. So if you ever need inspiring for a chip on your shoulder, Joe Gallagher's gym's a place to go. That's what Matt's saying. <laughs> But, but Tyler Denny, I think he can be easily underestimated because he's rugged. Not he's giving him this time. Unbelievably fit. Uh, he doesn't give up. And so, therefore, you're looking to think, I can do this. I can walk through this. And you can't. He's just there. So, what's it going to come down to? Is it going to be a case of who, who wants it more, do you think, Andy? Yeah, I think so. I think and largely it might come down to that. We were talking about this yesterday and how boxing is one of the not the only sport left but in a lot of other sports the physicality has been taken out of it a bit by rule changes boxing absolutely not so when it gets really down and dirty and hard it does still come down to that he's difficult Denny though because he's that kind of awkward muscular sort of chiselly southpaw he's just not he's just not nice to fight McCauley's with Andy let's hear from him McCauley back on the road back in the deep end once again you wouldn't want it any other way would you yeah snipe out now on all digital platforms yeah no um, yeah now I'm ready man ready I can't wait I mean, we were all there in Paris. We, we know what happened. Probably got very, very unlucky. Um, have you just had to shake that off and go again? Yeah, Paris was done the day I got home. You know, I'm fortunate to have a manager and trainer the way I, like I have. You know, didn't let deter me. I was straight back on it. I know that I've, I'm grateful for that. And other people aren't as fortunate to be in a position just to be able to dust it off and go again. But I am, and I have done, and I've got this opportunity now and looking to take that belt on tomorrow night. Can you give us a final prediction? Listen, I'm not here to start making predictions. I'm going to win, but you know, you know what I train to do. So like, there's no point in me. It's like Harlan coming on and saying, I'm going to score goals on Saturday. Of course we know you're going to score goals. That's what we pay to watch. So you know what's happening. We'll give you a guard of honour at the end. Let's bring uh, Tyler Denny up as well. Thanks, McCauley. You can go. Tyler, I mean, you're on this run. You must feel uh, full of confidence at the moment. Set it up for us. Your final thoughts ahead of tomorrow. I'm buzzing, man. Buzzing to be here in Birmingham on Sky Sports and uh, looking to put in a real dominant performance. How highly do you rate McCauley McGowan and what have you got to do to beat him? I rate him highly, man. I've got a lot of respect for him, but I just rate myself higher and I'm willing to show it uh, tomorrow night. Good luck. All right, no, sir. Thank you. One more time for our championship contenders, McCauley McGowan and Tyler Denny. Very different personalities. Macaulay McGowan very much just and says it how it is, doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and entirely, then he's kind of very smiley, unassuming, just and quietly Foster confident. And Sky Sports and our relationship with the British Boxing Board of Control are honoured to crown the first ever British Women's Championship, specifically in the welterweight division. Ten two-minute rounds right here in Birmingham tomorrow night. Introducing first, our first challenger from Pensnet, England. She holds a professional record of seven victories versus three defeats with two of those wins coming by way of knockout. She is known as Bavo. Here's Kirsty Bavington. I was so hard here today for us. It's going to be quite a moment tomorrow I'm night in, in this you. one. The first ever British Championship for women on. tomorrow night. Just put into context, Andy, what, what this means. I, I mean, like we've spoken about you. it a fair bit now, but it's moving that dial, isn't it? One little nudge in the right direction. Yeah, it really is, because the board have been very strict about this, because they felt that until now that the depth wasn't really there to justify uh, a British title being awarded in any division, because you need at least like eight strong fighters for them really to, to make it to make it worthwhile or, or worthy of them giving out this, this Lonsdale belt. We've seen the belt. It's absolutely it's absolutely beautiful. As it always is with the Lonsdale yeah, belt, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. The first one was given out in 1909 at lightweight to, to Freddie Welsh, and they haven't really changed the design for this one. The ribbon, slightly, slightly different colours, Yeah, the ribbon's it? slightly different, but other than that, it's the same. So this is a big, it's a huge honour for these two, definitely. For Lauren Bryce, she said at the press conference yesterday, a chance for her to make a little bit more history. Already a decorated amateur, Olympic gold medalist. It's been so far so good in a professional career. But in Kirstie Barrington, a little bit of a step up for her in terms of Kirstie has more experience as well. Tonight. Yes, you've got the experience. But you know when you're boxing for a Lonsdale belt, especially on this occasion here being the first 
Uh, it just gives you that little bit of something that you probably don't usually have when you're walking in. So badminton will box out of her skin because she's badminton. She knows, you know what, this is, this is a big, big deal. She understands the target in front of her. She understands how hard the task is going to be. So it's actually, if it's going to be an easy way, that's easier because she knows the task in front of you is tough. Um, and, and so this fight, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm really intrigued how it, how it goes out. If you still out there, still on stage, she can easily be talking to a Sarah. And that's, that's what I'm interested in. Lauren did a full professional fight tomorrow night, Matt. How impressive have you been with her so far? What do you like about her as well? Very composed, patient, uh, very clever. Um, and I think she just carries that air of just a bit of I don't know, regal she's just you know she's a special talent and uh she's got quite a mature head on her shoulders i think so yeah i think so um i, th I think she's gonna i think it's gonna be her first of many many titles i've got to give credit to kirsty Babington as well i was having a quick chat with her before this way in today and just talking about because Kirsty's actually a PE teacher as well so managing that as well as full-time training it's not an easy easy juggle to do those students will give her hell month. you know what she actually said she said not all of them know but some of them are starting to find out and the ones that are finding out are wanting to do some boxing training in the session so she said Tuesday they've already got their lessons planned that they want to do boxing in the PE session Anna can I just comment on the belt uh, the, the, the Lonsdale belt that I saw and that I, I've got a Lonsdale belt, and it's like I don't know if it's a, a no, another revamped version of it, but the 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 the, 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 the material on the back of it's a lot brighter. It's just a, I think it's a new version of the belt. Unless I've been out of the game that long, that everybody's getting them. But that belt there, it's a new it's a new tip to it. So I don't know if it's a, a special edition for uh, for the girl code. I don't know, but it's uh, absolutely good. Love that belt. Absolutely love it. And, and just explain a little bit why. It it means so much to win the British title for fighters. Because, because that is an official recognition of the being the best in Britain. And it's not, you win it the first time, could have been luck. Could be, win it, you, you defend it the second time, okay, maybe. But when you've just won and defended it against Britain's best three times, everybody, no matter what, you're in the history books, you are part of Boston history. Well, you can see it up there, Ben Shalom's holding it in all its glory. Uh, he's with Kirsty Barrington and Andy Scott. Kirsty, a long face off there. You look really up for it. You've been spending the whole week saying it's just another fight, but will you let yourself be present in this moment and let yourself be part of history? That Lonsdale belt there, the first of its kind, is up for grabs. How desperate are you to get your hands on it? Yeah, it's a privilege to be here and it's an honour to box for the belt. So, yeah, I'm buzzing to go. All the hard work's done. So, I just need to put it into practice on, on Saturday. You've been in with quality fighters before. You're not afraid to, to jump in um, and be matched hard. How confident are you that you've got the skills or determination or toughness to beat Lauren Price? Yeah, I'm confident that I can do my thing and, and get the win. And, but I just need to relax on it and just take my time and, and not go a bit, a bit wild with everything. And You know what I mean? But, yeah, I'm, I'm confident. I, I always am. You know, I won't get in the ring of boys. Kirsty, best of luck. Let's just bring Lauren up on stage but while we're waiting. Ben, just show that belt off. It is incredible. That's the first time you've had a chance to look at it as well. It is history in the making. It is. It feels like uh, you don't get many historical moments in sport and this certainly feels like one. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Thank you to Charlie and Robert for finally getting there and uh, we have the first ever British title for women. Lauren, let's bring you in. Fighting for it is one thing. Being the first to ever lift it is another. Just how confident are you? How excited are you? Yeah, I'm really excited. Like I said earlier on in the week, it's a complete honour, you know, um, to add more history as well to, to my name. And I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. You're not afraid to be moved quickly. You said when you turn pro, I don't want to wait around. Um, this is the first real significant step. How confident are you? Yeah, I'm more than confident. You know, I believe in myself. I believe I'm a level above. Um, but, you know, I know Kirstie, she's a... Obviously, great boxer herself. Um, she's been there. She, she's European level, you know. She's above British level, but it's a great stepping stone for me, and I'm really looking to put on a good, clean performance. Best of luck to you. History in the making. Carrie's <laughs> Artisan, of course, will be beside Lauren tomorrow night, and it's a busy time. Always a busy household, I imagine, in, in there one because one's fighting, and they don't seem to have a break. Then the other one is. If your world is pure boxing, it's the best condition to be in. Eat boxing, sleep boxing, live boxing. All it can do is improve you as a fighter. Love that belt. Absolutely stunning.
we know it's new and it's got that sort of extra sparkle, isn't it? 16 grand they cost. 16 grand. I, I, I prized that information Whoa. out of Charlie Giles. <laughs> what? 16 grand gold plated silver. That's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, which, which is why there's a sharp intake of breath at the border control whenever anybody wins one outright because they have to, they have, to have one over. That's why they're always trying to, that's why they're always trying to stick a hard mandatory on you. <laughs> I'm in shock. I, I won two of those. I gave one of them away. 16 oh, grand. I knew. Yeah, I 16, knew something yeah. like Johnny that. Johnny wants his money back. <laughs> You're just thinking what you could have been on eBay for, aren't you? Fighting out of Stettin, Poland, introducing. It does, though, put into context how special the belt is, though. Oh, yeah, 100%. It, they, they used to be solid gold, now gold-plated silver, because that was too expensive. Because every now and again, someone wins one outright, and you get you get it, you get to keep it. Official weight, 12 stone, 7 pounds for Pavel Stepien. 12 stones, 7 pounds for Pavel Stepian. He takes on Joshua Boazzi, who we can see him back in the ring after a year out. And of course, it is the return of Joshua Boazzi back on Sky Sports as well. A lot of pressure, a lot of expectation on the shoulders of Joshua Boazzi because we all want to see what he's going to do tomorrow night. So someone's saying he needed a softer touch in after being out for so long. I don't believe that. I think Joshua Boazzi is a world-class fighter. He's in with a world-class um, uh, opposition. And also Boazzi, he, he wouldn't be happy with that, would he? Can't he, Callum, he wouldn't want no, no, without a doubt Callum Smith should have boxed this guy and, and for one reason or another it's, it's the first time he's boxed out of Poland but trust me he's got a great amateur pedigree coming through as well as a, uh, as a professional still unbeaten this is that fight to say well I belong at this level so why are you saying uh, you know what? I don't, there's no soft touches here but he is known around the world as the former British and WBA intercontinental light heavyweight champion and Olympic bronze medalist, Joshua Buatzi. Yeah. weight, 12 stone, 6 pounds for Joshua Buatzi. 12 stone, 6 for Joshua Buatzi. Looks in exceptional shape, Matt. Yeah, as always, um, Huntsman professional, didn't expect anything out other than that. Um, and smiles on the scales, which is going to be a different story tomorrow night. And of course, that beard as well is going to come off. That is tradition that has never left Joshua Watsi. We always see the beard when he steps on the scales. Come fight night, that's gone. Much to his, but, but I think, his mum doesn't like the beard. I think that's, sim I think that's symbolic for the transformation yeah. of Joshua Watsi, the nice gentleman, to the animal inside the ring. <laughs> this is his fourth fight with Virgil Hunter for Joshua Watsi. How well do you think that partnership is working out? I think it's working well. I think against Craig Richards, you could see real signs there. I felt like he dropped his height a little bit. He sunk his head into his shoulders a bit more, got his hands up a little bit higher, and he was definitely harder to hit. He can crack. We, we absolutely know that. And I think quite a big moment for Stepien will be the first time that Buatsi catches him, because one thing you notice about him, this might sound like a bit of an odd thing to say, but he's got quite a long neck, Pavel Stepien. And holding a shot when you've got a long neck, you know, it's, it's, it's different, isn't it? Good call, and I think good the call, first honey. time that Boatsi really catches him, it's always a big moment in the fight. But Sepien, I like him, but he's never been in with anybody like him. That's just, that's just a fact. That's a good call, Annie. It's a great observation as well. I probably wouldn't, I'm surprised you've picked that so you don't actually box, but that's a good call. That's what you look for. You look at the length of the neck, you look at the length of the arms, you look at. That kind of compliment. It's a nice kind of back kind of compliment. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I'm thinking, how did you figure that one out? That's like that's like in-house conversation. So, because when you get a, a fighter like that, you know his chin's gonna go up at some point. You know his chin's there to be popped at. You got to be sneaky. You got to be crafty when you go for it. Because if you make it obvious, then they know they, they, they know exactly that uh, you, you've got. They know you've got the number. We haven't seen Bawati for for a bit, but do you think there's still plenty more to come from Joshua Bawati? Yeah, because uh, I think you'll see a, you'll see the best of him when he's when he is more active and there's a bit of momentum going, uh, and he's in those bigger fights like for the World Title fight. I think that's when we'll really we'll see the best of him. We have to see the best of him when he's backs up against the wall. I think that's when you'll really see the best of him. Some real intent in this face-off between Boatsi and Stefian. Can you see this one going the distance? 
personally no, because I think Stefan will be, I think he's a good choice of opponent. He was originally chosen for Callum Smith, so that shows you where people think he is. But the idea wasn't that he was going to go and cause Callum a load of problems, and I don't think he would have done. He will be aggressive. He will look to throw combinations. He does like to stay pretty tight to his opponent. So I think it will be good to watch. He's not going to get in there, get up on his toes and run, because that's that's the last thing you need if you're, if you're Joshua Buatzi. So I think it will be a good watch. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see what Stepien's got at this kind of level, because you know I'm still very confident in Buatzi that he's going to deliver what he should do, given his ability, but the time is, the time's, the time's upon us, isn't it? What do you think we need to see from Joshua tomorrow night? Be the guy that we've all got giddy and excited about. Be that mini Evander Holyfield-esque style of fighter. He's got fight, he's got bite, he's got hunger. Um, just be himself. Go and get, pick up where you left off. Like you see that. We can get giddy and excited about him all over again. OK, let's hear from both fighters. Pavel Stepian first with Andy. Ladies and gentlemen, Pavel Stepien joins us now. Jacek is here to help translate your first time outside of Poland. A very intense, long head-to-head. -head. What was going through your mind there and how confident are you? Pavel, first time you've been boxing outside of Poland, how are you feeling? I feel very well, I feel very well, I feel very well, I feel very well prepared. I'm waiting with patience, I'm happy that I can participate in such a big gala and we're waiting for tomorrow. Uh, I feel very well, I'm uh, well prepared, I am very self-confident and uh, I j I'm very happy that I'm here on uh, such a big show and I just can't wait. Just finally, how do you win this fight? By points or by knockout or does it matter? Jak wygrać tę walkę? Na punkty, przez knockout, czy nie ma to żadnego znaczenia? Nie ma to dla mnie żadnego znaczenia. Chcę pokazać dobry boks i wygrać walkę, po to tu przyjechałem. It doesn't matter. I just want to show you a good boxing and I came here to win. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jacek. Thank you very much. Let's bring Joshua Buatzi up onto the stage. Josh, you've had to wait a, a hell of a long time for this. I saw a real big smile as you made your way up onto the stage there uh, to weigh in. Just talk us through how you're feeling now. I'm excited, man. The hard work's been done. Um, 24 hours or so to go, so I'm ready. Um, it's taken a while, man, but we're, we're over it now, so I'm looking forward to it. He said, it doesn't matter how I win, I am here to win. That's the first time we've really heard him say that. Presumably you're not surprised, but what did you see when you looked into his eyes on the scales there? I'm bothered. We've got 10 rounds to settle this, so let's go. Have you got a final message for everybody? What sort of performance do you want to produce yourself? Let's just tune in to find out, Andy. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Joshua Quatsy. Joshua Boazzi there, in a buoyant mood, very confident ahead of his return to the ring tomorrow night, Andy. Yeah, I think he's just itching to get back in there. It's, it's totally understandable. It's been a long time away. Lots of frustrations with contractual issues to deal with and all that kind of thing. And fighters just want to fight, really. Uh, and he's spoken about how pleased he is to be back on this platform. And he knows that... He knows that not too much time has been wasted because the belts have been tied up with Bivol and Baturbiev having all four of them between them. So it's not like there have been loads of opportunities that he could have taken, that he hasn't, despite the back and forth between him and Eddie about Bivol. But he needs to get back on track and get moving. We haven't seen him in the ring for a bit, but Boatsy yesterday ranked himself as number one in the UK, map. What, what's your top three currently at the moment? I, I, the I, mean, heavy? I would have said he was number one if he'd have been more active. I mean... When other guys win and perform and look good, and he's as a box for a year. What about like, Callum? What about Callum though? Yeah, Callum's up there too. I mean, you're splitting hairs really among the guys. They, you know, Callum's proven at world level. He's stepped up to light heavyweight. Uh, he's knocking on that door. Um, but Boatsy, I, I, I said it from day dot when he was turning pro in the early days. I think this guy's going to be a light heavyweight world champion, and not one of those that just wins lucky to get one. I think he's going to win one and defend it and, and be a solid world champion. But that's exactly why the, the importance then is placed on getting Boatsy out there as quickly as possible, I guess, after, after tomorrow night, to follow on from what Matt was saying. It's frustration, not just for Boatsy, but also for his fans as well. Also the, for people that are in the game, because they know how talented he really is. And it'd be such a crying shame if he didn't even get a world title shot, never mind, end up being a world, uh, world champion. So, so now... Every fight's a risky fight, but you, what you see in that young man on there, you see world, world champion written all over him. 
So now that consistency is the most important thing because if he's not consistent, I, I, I can see a dream for him. Is there a, is there a slight danger, though, that Waxy could overlook Stepian tomorrow night? No, I really don't think, don't so. think so. No, I really don't. I think he's, I think he's super focused. Uh, I don't see that happening at, at, at all. Um, he knows what's at stake here. He, he really does. He's, he, the, the ranking thing is really interesting. And the way I kind of do mine, I'd actually have him at number three. Okay. I'd have and Callum your number at, one and two would be? I'd have Callum at one because he was the world champion at super middle. Uh, he flattened the world title challenger in Lennon Castillo. Yeah. Took out Matthew Bowdley. And I'd have Anthony Yard at number two because he's had two world title fights and he's acquitted himself well. So Josh wouldn't really like that, him being put at number three. But my kind of reason for it would be your number three. Look at on paper, your number three. Fight Anthony they're, they're Yard. More, they're more, Fight they're Anthony more, Yard. Uh, act, they've been more active. They're more proven as in. He's, you know, like I said, Callum's won a world title. Super middle is up a light heavy. But uh, it's an opinion. Oh, I no, just, I get it. But I think I think Moats is mustard. When he's on song, he's been inactive. I don't think complacency or looking past it will be a thing. I think the biggest worry tomorrow is that he tries too hard to put on an amazing performance instead of just focusing on getting the job done. And you probably will put on the amazing performance. Do you know what I mean? I think just establish the jab and let everything else just flow. But if we stick him at number three, you know, it's kind of like... We're Still just, going. We're <laughs> Back to three. <laughs> we're, we're just sticking a fork in him to say, basically, come on, you know, yeah. come on. Let's, let's. I think Do you know what? They're all the three guys, Yard, Smith, uh, Josh... You're splitting hairs. Luke, They're Luke, all the, 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 the interesting thing will be having the same conversation tomorrow night, won't it? Exactly. After the fight, yeah. it's probably more more relevant then. Carry on, Johnny. What you're going to say? Uh, I'd say on paper you've got to get it, you've got to say Smith is number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything else there is is is, is, an, is an opinion, mm-hmm. um, and that's all it's going to be until these guys are actually in with each other. So, and listen, I'm a massive fan of Yard. I'm a massive fan of Watsi, but I can't split them. I can't. I, I can look at Smith and think, you know what? You proved it up there at top level. So, so you'd be silly to go away from him. You'd be silly to be swayed otherwise. But eventually, that dance will get on. They'll all be on the same dance floor. The fight should get on as long as they all keep working in the right direction. And the likes of Dan Aziz, who'll be with us tomorrow night, he'll be having an eye on this fight, won't he? Because that's a fight he'd very much like against Joshua Boazzi. We know they're friends, we know they've known each for a long time, they've sparred before, but do you think that could be put aside and that fight could actually oh, 100%, happen to them? Oh, 100%, yeah. 100%, and that's what I really like about these lads. Like, Callum's got Baturbiev, and, and hopefully he wins that fight, and then we're on then, aren't we? Because... You know, these boys can form an orderly yeah. queue and in the meantime, fight each other. Which is exactly what we fight want to see, Fight each other for the right yeah, to yeah. fight him. You know, I give Callum and, a really good I chance. Think, I think Callum could do perturb him as well, I, I really do. do. So that's taking them a commercial head off, uh, because on the commercial head, you wouldn't let these guys fight each other because you'd like, like think, right, you get this, Callum. Now you've got the real authentic attitude of fighting, saying, now nah, forget that, I want to fight you. And that's how boxing should be. Yeah. You get the best getting with the best to prove they are the best but so you've got to take your commercial head off because that's how, we, that's how we're going to look at it you just hope in this situation that politics get put to one side don't you and those fights can actually be made because that's the, the fights that fans want to see uh, but before we go fight you're most looking forward to tomorrow night Matt um, probably McComb and uh, Casey Benjamin it's going to be good that one Andy top of the bill for yeah. me I, I just really want to see I really want to see what Josh has got tomorrow night because he's, you know, he got the rave reviews after the Olympics and rightly so. And he's not really done anything wrong as a pro. It just hasn't probably moved as quick as he might have liked. But he is, you know, Matt's right. It's, it's. I can understand why you were putting him at one. It's on potential more than achiever, but I totally get it. Yeah, it because is, yeah, he really is, is, really is good. We'll, we'll keep this conversation going tomorrow, I, I, I'm sure. Johnny? Bar the top of the bill, I'm looking forward to the the, the, uh, the growth of Ben Whitaker. What he's going to say in before the fight, during the fight, and after the fight. Uh, I love to see the beginning of a story, and then we can talk about it at the end of the story. So, and, and talk uh, about calling people out. There's no danger. Ben Whitaker, I'm sure, will be calling everyone out should he win tomorrow night. Um, right, that's it from us here at the Way. And the talking is done. It is all about fight night tomorrow night, live from Birmingham. We'd love your company. Join us, Sky Sports Action, Sky Sports Showcase, seven o'clock. We'll see you there.